Ah, there you are, Ross. And about time, too. Right, now pay attention. You're going to need this, and this, and, oh, be careful, Ross, and this. Look, that's not a toy. And, of course, this. Right, in again. I want this back in pristine order, not like the others. I'm a caring, sharing man of the 90s, but I feel it's time to put my hands up and say, yes, I am a James Bond fan. You can keep your Terminator 2s and your Die Hard 3s. The recently released Goldeneye is James Bond 17. And in the 33 years since Doctor No, two and a half billion people have paid to see the most popular film series of all time. Pierce Brosnan is officially the fifth Bond, although we mustn't forget that the mighty Bob Holness once played him on radio in the 1950s. Tonight, I aim to find out just who James Bond is, how he still manages to beat the living daylights out of the competition, and whether or not even he knows how to set his VCR to recall stars in their eyes when he goes away for two weeks in the sun. But first of all, I wonder if it's possible to sum up the appeal of James Bond in less than, say, ten words? Yes, I mean, he's, he's the ultimate fantasy character for the guys. James Bond got to do all the fun things. You know, he got, he, I just watched those movies going, wow, that's amazing. He's, he's, he's on skis, and then he turns, that turns into a car, and that flies away to whatever. I mean, it's just amazing. A good guy who's rather flawed in many ways when you think of the original Bond, you know, a guy who smokes and drinks and kills and womanizes and all the rest of it. No. Looks like you're out to get me. It's an idea at that. He'd just get everything right, and you what wine to order, and he was cool. And he was dead sophisticated and handsome. The girls loved him. But if things got out of hand, he could beat the shit out of you. Well, I mean, he used women for shields. I mean, if there a bullet heading his way or a spear, I think he'd swing her around and say, sorry, love, but I guess it's your unlucky day. If there's one person who knows Bond better than anyone, it's the man who played him the most. The man who stylishly donned that tux no fewer than seven times as 007. Roger, I imagine that um, after your successful stint as the saint and being possessed of huge male beauty mm -hmm. and charisma, you were an obvious choice <laughs> to be Bond. But um, 
Did you feel that it was a, a sort of a difficult role to take on? Were you at all worried about filling the shoes of Mr. Connolly? Uh, well, no, no, not really. You know, so I figured, you know, a thousand actors over the years have played Hamlet, so why shouldn't another actor have a go at something somebody else was very well established in? My name's Bob. James Bob. I know who you are, what you are, and why you've come. Obviously, it's a great part to play, but did the fact that you were going to be whizzing around to incredibly exotic locations and snuggling up to some of the world's most beautiful women, was that a, a, a factor in accepting this position? Well, that's why I did it for so little money. <laughs> Dictons can be beautiful. This is no time to be discussing politics. I had myself done a lot of uh, movement in, uh, in training with Yat Malgram. I've uh, come to offer my sincere condolences. <coughs> And I think that the movement of Bond, the kind of dance of him in the films, has a lot to do with it. I don't think you should have opened that car door by yourself. When I say dance, I don't mean punching around and uh, that sort of way, but just how the movement in scenes. Many people, Sean is the definitive mm. Bond. Um, mm. Do you feel that way, Bam? Do you think that Absolutely, he is? absolutely. I mean, when Roger played it, he played it much more sort of tongue-in-cheek. I think rightly, because with great respect to Roger, that's his line, and he's not a great butch, virile character. With Sean, you had the physical presence and the hint of cruelty, yeah. which is in Bond's dark side. It's a Smith and Wesson. And you've had your six. With Roger, you had the, the flip side, the humor, the charm, the flares. Exactly. Love was lesson number two. Togetherness. Till death do us part or thereabouts. The time before we leave. For lesson number three. Absolutely. There's no sense in getting off half cocked. And uh, with Tim Dalton, you had the theatrical credits. I haven't finished here, sir. Leave it to the Americans. It's their mess. Let them clear it up. Sir, they're not going to do anything. I owe it to Leiter. He's put his life on the line for me many times. Oh, spare me this sentimental rubbish. You have an assignment. And I expect you to carry it out objectively and professionally. Then you have my resignation, sir. We're not a country club, number seven. I think Tim did bring something very much to it. There was a sort oh, of, a, yeah. there was a gritty oh, meanness. Yes. So did George Lazenby. You know, a lot of people have sort of slightly dismissed George Lazenby and said, oh, well, he only did it once and he wasn't, you know, what we thought of as Bond. <laughs>